Welcome to MD310 Medical Care Provider. In this session, we'll discuss medical kits. By the end of this session, you'll be able to identify four factors that will influence the type and amount of contents in a medical kit, describe four desirable characteristics of a medical kit, and differentiate between first aid kits, jump bag and first response bags, an abandoned ship medical bag, and infirmary stock. So there's a number of things that are going to influence what's in your medical kit. The duration of the journey and number of the crew, obviously. The longer the journey, the more crew, the more equipment you need. The agency having jurisdiction, and what that means is whoever is responsible for overseeing what you have in your kit, whoever has the legal authority to tell you what you can and can't have, because there may be things you want, but the law doesn't let you. Any unusual circumstances based on the proposed route, for example, if you're going into an area where malaria is endemic, that is, it's very prevalent, you may need more doses of anti-malarial medications and make sure that you have the right ones. If you can restock at every port, you may need less equipment. If you're going to have a hard time restocking and you won't be able to till you get back the end of your route, then you may need to take more. And don't take stuff you can't use and no one else on the crew can use. There's no point in having equipment that you're not trained to use and comfortable using. So all your medical kits should be durable and appropriately sized for the contents. You don't want to jam too much in, and on the other hand, you don't want to waste a lot of space. Ideally, it'll be modular, and what that means is you arrange things within your kit, either by body system, so medications and supplies for the stomach and GI tract, medications and supplies for the cardiovascular system, or you arrange it by intervention, so IV fluids, airway management, etc. And you also want to have emergency and non-emergency access. So stuff that you won't use regularly and that you don't need in an emergency, you pack further into the kit. Things that you need immediately to save somebody's life to address X, A, B, C, D, uh, D type of issues, that's the stuff that you keep right on the top. You want it to be user-friendly. Remember, you may be sick and need someone else to take care of you who has less training, so you want them to be able to use it without a problem. You want to have some kind of a guide that tells everybody where everything is so they can find it easily. And you want it to be secure so that nobody takes stuff out of it that they're not supposed to. So you may have an unsecured supply of over-the-counter type medications and then a secured medical kit that includes all your resuscitation equipment and your controlled medications. What will you have for medications in your environment? Well, the IMO has a quantification addendum for the International Medical Guide for Ships. And in that, they list all the medications that are referenced in that text, which essentially are the IMO medications for ships, and the recommended quantities for a given crew size. So you'll likely have a number of different types of medical kits. The most common, most numerous, will be the first aid kit. You'll probably have several of these, and they'll be in areas where the crew works or regularly congregates. Any crew member can use them. It's the equipment to address exsanguinating hemorrhage, airway, breathing, and circulation problems. It usually will contain some non-prescription medications, um, ibuprofen, acetaminophen, antibiotic ointments, and some basic wound care supplies. And depending on where it's located in the ship, you all may also have an automated or automatic external defibrillator. Now, you as a more highly trained provider will also likely want to put together a jump bag or a first response bag. And this is the medical bag that's taken to an emergency situation. It's designed for more advanced resuscitation by more highly trained individuals like yourself. And it's, again, there to deal with the XABC, exsanguinating hemorrhage, airway, breathing, and circulation issues. It may have advanced airway supplies in, so bag valve mass devices, or an oral pharyngeal airways, nasopharyngeal airways. It may have IV supplies, and it may even have resuscitation medications for cardiac arrest. And if there's not already an AED available where you're going, you would also take an AED with the jump bag or first response bag. You'll actually want and really be required to have an abandoned ship bag as well. It's not used shipboard. It's a waterproof uh, kit. It's stored where it's immediately available to be placed in a lifeboat. Uh, it, if it can be stored in the lifeboat, 
based on environmental conditions, great, but most likely it's not going to be. Uh, there'll be a first, it's essentially be a first aid kit with medications for addressing the common issues that occur when you're on a lifeboat, like pain medications, things for seasickness and vomiting, skin infections, because those are very common from skin breakdown, particularly in salt water and high sun environments, sunscreen, and maybe salt tabs as well, uh, depending on what you're going to have available for uh, nutrients and rehydration. And then finally, you have an infirmary or a, an aid room or some fixed location where you can provide care. And everything else goes there. And that usually these are in cabinets or cupboards, not really in boxes or kits. Uh, it's, again, the modular system, not really portable. Your refrigerated stock and all of your medications, with the exception of possibly resuscitation medications, are kept in there. And this is really where you go to work to take care of people. Ideally, you, you provide sick call there, and this is where people come to you to be seen. A good reference to review for contents is from the International Medical Guide for Ships, 3rd edition, Chapter 33, The Ship's Medicine Chest. Please complete the knowledge review associated with this session, and if you have any questions, contact your instructor.